welcome to worship for Wednesday, July 15th. As you know, I don't have to tell you, we're still in the midst of dealing with the pandemic. It seems like things are normal. It seems like things are back to how they should be. But I was out, spent, I spent most of yesterday out um, and about, went into shops, many shops for the first time, uh, really since before June. And I felt uneasy. I was slightly inwardly criticizing all those not wearing masks and people standing too close together. I was quite concerned about my own safety and the safety of other people. Even though it feels kind of normal now, it doesn't feel normal. And it's okay if you're uncertain about going out and mixing, if you're concerned about what you're going to face when you get there. And it's in the midst of our uncertainty and our fears and our anxiety and the roughness of life that we meet together to worship to pray and to be united together in knowing that God has not abandoned us, that he gives us strength to see our way through times like these, but also teaches us how to use them as opportunities to be people of good news and people of hope. So let's remember being, being those people of hope as we enter into our worship this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. Ascribe greatness to our God. Lord, open our lips, and we shall praise your name. The Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy, giving God the glory. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize his presence with us. As God's people, we have gathered let us worship him together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. O King enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name. Lord God Almighty, in our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And then trouble or persecution arises on account of the word. That person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares for the world, and the lure of, of wealth chokes the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Parables are simply a story with a point to them. And you listen very carefully and you begin to see that that point is about you. And in Jesus' case, it's about you and your relationship to God and how God wants you to be in the world as a person who's becoming like Christ. Jesus tells us these stories so that we go, ah, this is what God is like. This is what I can be like. And so he tells stories which hold familiar imagery in them. All of his listeners will know what farmers do and shepherds do and vineyard owners do and stewards and all that sort of stuff. So he tells a story about a farmer who, unlike the farmers of the first century, is sowing his field and just throwing the seed wherever it will go, almost like it's going to last forever, like he's never going to run out of seed. And of course, they're sitting there thinking, this is crazy. You don't have enough seed to start with to do that. You've got to make sure it lands in the right place. You don't want it to land on the sidewalk in the rocky soil or where there's thorns, because that's a waste. And if that seed doesn't grow up, you won't be able to eat. You won't be able to pay your debts. You won't have any seed left for next year. So people are looking at this story already and going, this guy's throwing this seed everywhere. This is crazy. Why would he do that? This is disaster. And I think there are farmers today who would listen to a farmer doing that and go, no, it is so uncertain. You've got to make sure everywhere you plant that seed is going to produce a harvest. But as the people lean in and listen to this story of this farmer who doesn't really seem to know what he's doing, they begin to see that Jesus is telling a story about God who doesn't believe in scarcity, who doesn't believe there are, are any places in all of his creation where that seed won't be planted and produce something. He's not too careful. He spreads his love and his graciousness and his salvation and his restoration everywhere and watches to see what happens. Now, it can fall in some soil, good soil, where it will grow like you expect it to. But also, it will fall in hard places where it will struggle to grow. And we want to be people who live in that good soil, people who are that good soil. Because the story about this farmer, this unexpected story, has a bit of a twist in it. Because when we try to work out who we are in this story, we're both the soil and we're the seed, but we're also not the seed. The seed is the word of God. It's God's love for us. It's God's purposes for his creation. And he plants that into us. And we nurture that seed by being that good soil. We let it grow because we've created the right conditions for it to grow in. But also, we need to produce fruit. We need to be like the seed that grows. So we're both the soil and the seed. So they're listening to us and thinking, who are we? And what are we supposed to be doing? How do we make this seed grow so that we can see God in his fullness? So as Jesus tells this story, there's a really key phrase in there, which is, for those who have ears, let them hear. Because if you don't have the expectation and the yearning to receive that word of God and have it fall into your life, you'll be like those terrible bits of soil. The seed won't take root because you haven't created the space for it or the conditions for it. So that seed will thrive anywhere where there are people who want to receive it, who want to be people who desire the life that Jesus has. Jesus' life isn't focused on the same things that our life is focused on. He's not about pursuing worldly goods, pursuing money, pursuing status. His life is about caring for other people, about creating life that's for all of us to live. It's about sacrifice. It's about kindness and gentleness and humility and justice and peace and love. He's very big on us knowing God because God is the source of life. God is the one who gives us a true life that gives true pleasure and true abundance. And so Jesus is trying to make the point that it doesn't just happen to you. You need to be prepared for it. You need to be someone whose ears are facing towards God, listening for that signal that comes from God, that word that comes from God, and knowing what it is that we were created to be and how to be free of the shackles of the way of this world. Because while there's things that we may think are absolutely great and fantastic and wonderful, they actually enslave us and take us away from God and therefore take us away from life. 
So let the seed be planted in us as good soil that's prepared to take that seed and for it to grow. And we know what the harvest is, and that's us being in the image of, of Jesus and taking his life on as our life. Which means we have to look at what we do to prepare that soil. Soil needs to be watered, it needs to be fertilized, it needs to get the right amount of sunlight, enough heat, enough rain. It needs all sorts of things for it to work, for that seed to grow in and take its nourishment from the soil around it. So we tend to the soil of our lives. And that's why that phrase, those who have ears, let them hear, is so important. If you don't yearn for these things, you won't receive these things, and that seed doesn't have a chance in your life. But if you're already leaning towards it and you're yearning for it, you'll know what that seed is, and you'll seek what's needed for that seed to grow. And that's why it's so important for us to meet as church so that we can together work that out and help each other tend. It's like an allotment society almost. So that we can tend to that seed in each other's lives and help create good soil that helps us all to grow. And that we can create a space for those who don't naturally live in that good soil, who aren't naturally inclined towards that good soil so that we can help them develop the quality of it so that God's life can uh, grow in them as well. Jesus wasn't a farmer. Jesus was using an image from the life of those around him so that they could see clearly or not if their ears weren't listening to what God was calling them to and desiring for them. And so it's really important to not just do good things so that we can receive salvation, but that we actually yearn for it, that we're actually seeking it out so we recognize it when it comes and we can do the right things to nourish and nurture it. So I wonder how the seed of the Word of God is doing in your soil, how you're tending to that soil, what kind of threats are coming to it, what sort of insects want to come and chew on the leaves and birds want to come and peck at the seeds whether the soil is full of too much clay, whether it's too waterlogged, whether there's enough um, nourishment in it and nutrients so that the seed can draw life from it. And that's why we read scripture and we pray and we spend time with each other, encouraging each other and seeking together because we can't do it on our own. The soil becomes good because we've taken on the life that Christ calls us to. And that will require a change in our lives. It will require us to dig up old ground and do what's needed to turn it into good soil. This parable tells us that it's not impossible for seed to grow in other kinds of soil, but it's very hard. And so tend to the soil of your life and the Word of God will grow in you and it will bear fruit to the wider world. Jesus tells stories that shock us where it goes against our expectations. Most of the main characters in his stories are doing the wrong thing. Vineyard owners who pay workers who work for an hour the same as they pay people who worked for 12. Shepherds who leave 99 safe sheep to go off and look for the one that's in danger. Fathers who welcome back their sons who have spit in their face and taken their money and thrown it all away, but still receive them back with open arms. They're all doing it wrong from the world's point of view. And yet Jesus is trying to say, God is the one who's getting it right. All you need to do is come to him, receive that word of life, receive that salvation and that restoration, and then spend your life making the ground ready for it to grow in so that your life will be abundant and so will be the lives of those around you. Amen. Let us pray. Father God Almighty, we pray for our nation. We pray for our leaders, both national and local, that you might give them wisdom. We pray for those who are tasked with make making policy a reality in life. We pray you, you give them wisdom and insight and effectiveness. For those who serve us in what we call the front lines, who care for the broken and the sick, who put out the fires and keep order, for those who serve us in shops 
and serve us in other ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church, wisdom and how to reopen churches safely and worshipfully, for peace of mind for those who attend and for those who decide now is not the time. Wisdom for leaders and laity as we think about what church might be like following the pandemic, how we might serve each other and our neighbors, how we will worship, learn, and grow and share our lives, how we might pay for this life of the church, how we might use our buildings and where we might meet. Give us wisdom in how to be your people in a time that is not mapped out for us. We pray for those who are ill in body, mind, and spirit. For those who are ill, we pray for peace and healing. Those traumatized by lockdown and isolation, we pray for peace and healing. For those who suffer from anxiety, depression, and other ailments that prevent life in abundance, we pray for healing and peace. We pray for those who grieve. We pray for their healing and their peace. Let us keep silence and offer to God our concerns today, our joys today, and our questions. Bind our prayers together as we offer to you the joys and pain of the world that you have created and are now healing and restoring and recon reconciling to yourself. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.